This episode of Defining Diabetes is brought to you by InPen by Companion Medical. InPen is America's only FDA cleared smart insulin pen and app system that eliminates guesswork with its integrated dosing calculator. And that's about the least of what it does. Check out InPen today at companionmedical.com. There are links in your show notes and at juiceboxpodcast.com. In today's episode of Defining Diabetes, Jenny Smith and I will define a term that impacts your life with type 1 diabetes. Now, you know Jenny Smith from integrateddiabetes.com. She's in all the pro tip episodes and Ask Scott and Jenny. You know Jenny. Stop it. Don't act like you don't. If you want to hire Jenny, you can check her out at integrateddiabetes.com. Jenny would love to have a private conversation with you and see if she can't help you with some of your diabetes questions. But for today... Jenny's going to help me define brittle diabetes. Please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise, and to always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. At the end of this episode, I'm going to include a little... I, don't, I want to call it an outtake with me and Jenny. It might not be an outtake. It's a preamble, some chatter we were having before we started, you know, doing the defining diabetes thing. It's fun. Jenny's a hoot. I would like to define brittle diabetes, and I am super interested in what you're going to say when I ask you if it's actually a thing or if it's an old timey term for, I don't know what's wrong with you. It does have a definition, right? There is a definition. And as far as like the, the old timey thing, I would say that that's more, that's more appropriate. Brittle diabetes um, used to be termed to, or used to be something doctors called someone with diabetes that, they just sort of threw their hands up and their blood sugars were all over the place and there was no, you know, do this and it works and whatnot. I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, we know the variables that can go into management. So I think in today's world with technology and CGMs and being able to follow things, a good number of people who probably would have been called brittle ages ago, um, or maybe even in the past five or 10 years with a really old doctor who isn't clearly up on what could be being done. I think they may have been called brittle, but in today's age with what we can follow and track, many times we get people who come to us even and they say, no one's been able to help me kind of get this contained. And we look at things and we start with like the basics that we've done before in, in the pro tips, kind of starting with basil and looking at boluses and looking at food impact and things that some people may have never really looked at before as the impact and how to pay attention to them. So we can kind of then, you're not brittle. You just haven't had good information given to you about how to manage more consistently, right? Um, now, I would say I, I hate the term, I hate the term brittle, but I would say that there are some people with long term diabetes, like, you know, ages and ages, you know, 50 plus years, maybe, who may be at a point that there is, there are potentially other complications in the picture. And that can make management of diabetes itself a little bit more cumbersome. And so you might appear a little bit more, I guess, brittle. Again, I hate to use that term because it's, it's, it's old. Um, but when you've got other things like heart disease or kidney disease or even things with like neuropathy that might limit or change how often you could be active um, or energy levels, all those things can impact blood sugar control. So it's not so much that it's, oh, my gosh, I'm just going to throw my hands up and there's nothing to do about my blood sugar because I just can't manage it. Manage nothing ever work. Sometimes it's management of a couple of things to get the management of diabetes more stable. Um, 
So I'm with you on the idea of I hate I hated even bringing it up because the first thing I think about is someone who's been living for such a long time with a doctor telling them there's nothing you can do about this. You're just a brittle diabetic. And them yeah. really buying into that and living a life around it and then turning this on and hearing someone go, that's not a real thing. Like, I don't want them to have that experience, right? Um, right. But I also know that we define... Because it's almost like taking a diagnosis away. It's like telling them, nope, you're definitely, you know, you're crazy to think that your ups and downs are, you know, something that you're doing wrong. Because it, it's not. You've just not been given enough information to manage. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time... We, we've already defined a couple of terms that, you know, bristle people, and I get a lot of good feedback about, I'm glad you tackled this idea. So I'm glad right. I want to do this. So, you know, Googling it comes up, rarediseaseinfo.nih.gov. So this is the government saying that brittle diabetes is a term that is sometimes used to describe hard to control diabetes. It is characterized by wide variations or swings in blood sugar in which blood glucose levels can quickly move from too high to too low. And that's a fairly new, that's from 2017. That's not an old entry. Right. right. And so I've always seen it as, it's a, it's a give up from a doctor. It's just like, I don't know what's wrong. You're brittle. You know, like, like you, know, yeah. you know what it reminds me of? I, and I hate to say this, but 50 years ago, if a woman, 50 years ago, probably longer than that now, if a woman was emotional They'd say what? Like, oh, she has the vapors. She's prone to outbursts. You know, you know what I mean? Like what that really meant was some lady was saying something some guy didn't want to deal with. And they were like, oh, you know how she gets. You, you, you know, like, you know, like, right. it must be her time exactly. of the month, right? Like all that stuff. That kind of like dismissive stuff, which I think really means my wife's trying to talk to me about her feelings and I don't want to. So let's just say she's crazy and get out of this conversation. And I don't think this Correct. is much different in that. It sounds to me like doctors see these crazy numbers, right? Imagine it. Imagine no technology. You go in with your meter and your meter says 35 and then it says 400. And the doctor doesn't know what to say and the insulin's not as good as it is now and you can't glucose monitor with a CGM. And the person hasn't had any notes because it's three weeks ago when that happened. They're like, I don't know what happened three weeks ago. And they're working off whatever bad advice they got 30 years ago from an endo. I mean, mm -hmm. imagine what they tell people today. Imagine what they were saying to people 30 years ago. It must have been right. just like, hey, you stick that in there, and if you get dizzy, have a candy. You, you, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it was probably similar to that, right? And so I, I shudder to think that there are people living today who think they're brittle when I really believe it's possible that they just aren't aware of how to use their, their insulin. Well, and even that definition that came from NIH in 2017 mm -hmm. – is there's no definition to why the variability could be there, the ups and the downs. We all have variability at times. And if you're, as we've kind of gone through in many of the things that we've talked about, if you're not, if you don't pay attention and make some notes about things or keep track of some things or look at your data, you could feel very brittle. You could feel like nobody's ever going to be able to help me. My blood sugar just does what it wants to do. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. And, you know, whatever. I've just got bad diabetes. Yeah, <laughs> I have the bad case. kind. Well, I've even, got the bad even kind. Even the word right. brittle, Je Jenny, means, right. it just means like easy to fall apart. Like right, right, the idea of something brittle, like a brittle bone or a brittle twig or something like that, like something yes. that if you don't hold it with kid gloves and don't move, it's just going to explode and fall into dust. Right. And and it's just, if you're living and right now and thinking you're brittle, please go back and listen to the pro tip episodes because it's very possible. I mean, unless, and I hope this isn't the case, but unless you've gotten to the point with your health, like Jenny described earlier, where there are, where there is a lot going on that's not positive, I mean... Still, then you're not brittle. You just have complications, you, you know. Like Correct. It's, it's so anyway. And there is different management then for complications and the diabetes component. There, you know, I used to work when I worked as an inpatient diabetes educator and dietitian. There is very different management for people who have chronic kidney disease or who are on dialysis or those complications. They bring something in. I I also used to work on a cancer ward. Mm -hmm. And there are people who have diabetes and also have cancer. That brings into the picture a whole host of fluctuations that happen. That doesn't mean you call the person brittle. Right. It means that there's something there to manage to help them also manage the diabetes. Yes, yes. 
Excellent. Your your wife is upset in 1925. She doesn't have the vapors. And right. so, that's <laughs> she probably I'm, needed a hug or yeah, just to sit yeah. down and actually talk to somebody, right. right? Maybe if that guy opened his mouth and didn't cheat on her, she wouldn't be so upset. So right. anyway, I, there you, go. you made me just now think of Nicole, who is just on. And I don't know if you've ever hold, heard Nicole's episodes, but Nicole came on prior to getting a kidney, uh, two kidneys, and a uh, pancreas transplant. And then she just nice. came on recently to talk about how it's going after the transplant. And one of the things she brought up is because her management was not great by her own admission for a very long time. She has gastroparesis too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She actually has to consider her medications, right? Because of the gastroparesis. Like what if the, it doesn't get picked up in the right time. And that's just one of those things you just said, like there's adjustments that need to be made based on your situation. Right. Right. So, so Nicole's stomach isn't brittle. (laughs) Nicole has gastroparesis and she needs to do something a certain way. Correct. I like that we did this one. Okay. Next. Awesome. Yeah, it was good to. It was definitely good to bring up because I think it's still it's still talked about too much. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. When I first said it to you, I had the same feeling in my stomach because I had when I said, "Hey, Jenny, let's define non-compliant." <laughs> I was right. like, and you looked at me like, "Really, Scott? Should we do that?" And I was like, "No, no, we should. It's going to be okay." And you're like, "Yeah, this. Yeah, you know, we're going down with the ship here, aren't we, buddy?" <laughs> um, okay. So, no, that was a good one too. Non-compliant because I hate that word. Huge thanks to Jenny for coming on the show as always. Don't forget that you can hire Jenny right at integrateddiabetes.com. There are links right there in your show notes if you want to check out Jenny. And I think there are links at juiceboxpodcast.com. And of course, you can just go to Integrated Diabetes and give her a shout. Thanks also to InPen for sponsoring this episode of the Juice Box Podcast. Do Not forget, all you have to do is go to companionmedical.com and there you can find out where you stand with your diabetes care plan because the InPen app displays your active insulin, blood glucose, and the last insulin dose. It also reminds you when to take a dose, calculates and recommends your next dose, and warns you if your insulin is expired or has been stored outside of the recommended temperature range. Having an InPen is like having an insulin pump, but it's in a pen. Get it? In pen. You get it. You can get more Jenny in the Diabetes Pro Tip series, other Defining Diabetes episodes, and of course, the Ask Scott and Jenny episodes. If you just can't get enough Jenny, that's where you can find her here on the Juice Box Podcast. And now, you're used to hearing Jenny say smart stuff about diabetes. Get ready to listen to her talk about other stuff where she sounds mm, more human. We've been trying to figure out for Arden all year, which is like the incredible oh, poor network connection. I don't know where you went no, all I, of a sudden. I, poor network connection and you were gone. Um, you were gone yeah, all of a like, sudden. You're like a little blippy today. You're, you're, yeah, I don't It's It's pretty windy outside here today and kind of overcast. So that might be, I don't know, whatever happens in the atmosphere of cloud. I was going to say, do you get your internet through satellite or do you get it through like your cable system? I don't know. I've got a little <laughs> like box in the corner of my office and whatever it does. Yeah, I, I have to admit, what I just said to you is going to end up at the end of one episode where people will feel better knowing that there are some things you don't understand at all. <laughs> have any no idea whatsoever jenny knows everything like how do you get your internet no no idea she starts looking around the room like ah so anyway um (laughs) that was great i uh, it comes in i've got a little i've got a little um cable thing box in the i think i'm assuming it's the (laughs) wi-fi converter whatever it does thing yeah i i have no idea are you not surprised now that i could like like build a loop and actually make it work oh, and understand it's yeah. working i'm a little concerned that people are running around the country and the world doing things with their insulin just that you made up in your head <laughs> yeah, no no i promise not that You'll but learn. um if you ask you to set up all of the internet connections and everything no nope, probably That's not, not going to get done I'll figure it out. Like I, I can read directions. I'm a direction follower. I, I got that from my dad. Everything that he brought home, you took out the directions and you started with a, like all the like shelving units and stuff. 
all my, he got all of the Tupperware containers out and he put them all like by size and color and everything. He organized them right. and we need one of A and we put it in the A hole and one. Of, well, that sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? The A hole. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, this is staying in too, Jenny, just in case you're wondering. This is going to be like the beautiful like last five minutes of an episode. Some people are like, just leave in the stupid stuff you say. This is going to be one of those that stays in. Um, yeah, so. But anyway, that I, I learned my organization of how to put things together from my father. He was very, very organized. Yeah. For, for clarity, Jenny learned how to put things in the A-hole from her dad. So yeah. <laughs> Is he still alive? I'd like him to hear this. <laughs> he's he's not, unfortunately. Oh, so he passed away. No, it's okay. He passed away about ten years ago. He had um he had uh, kidney cancer. So Jenny, yeah. I, I'm I'm horrified to tell you that I wasn't sorry to hear that he was passed. I was sorry to hear that he couldn't hear what you just said. <laughs> the humorous nature of what I said, yes. And he would have he would have liked it because he had the greatest dad jokes, like in the world. My dad had a great sense of humor, so he would have loved it. <laughs> hey, can I get you to do something? You're on a Mac, right? Okay, so I just wanted to prove to you all that Jenny's a real human being. She's not perfect, uh, but she has a great sense of humor, and uh, she does not know how her internet works. At the end here, you know, just let me tell you that the podcast just hit 500 reviews on iTunes, which was really a touching little plateau for me. Um, quite a little milestone. Most of them are really good, which was also very nice. Um, I want to thank you too, because the podcast just hit 1.25 million total downloads for the whole show, which is a really incredible thing. You know, I've probably said before, but I think the first month of the podcast back in February, 2015, I think there was something like a thousand downloads that month. And now I can't, you know, get a thousand downloads like every couple hours. As a matter of fact, by the time you hear this episode, November of 2019 will become the most downloaded month in the history of the podcast. And that happens a lot where the next month, like where one month does better than the last month over and over again. That really is to do with the podcast being shared by listeners. I have no budget for marketing. Um, and I can only hope that when the podcast grows, that means that you found it helpful or entertaining or thought provoking or something, um, and told somebody else about it, which I really, uh, I didn't expect that either. I know in hindsight, it seems obvious, right? Somebody will like it and they'll tell somebody else. But in the beginning, I, I really didn't think that would be. I don't know. I just didn't imagine it. And, you know, reflecting here just a couple of hours past Thanksgiving, I'm really thankful for it. Actually, I, I was looking through my photographs. So I'll, I'll leave you. Go back to your life after this. I was looking through some photographs from two weeks ago. Uh, and I was in Kansas City at the JDRF Type 1 Nation event. Um, I did four talks that day, right? It's a... Uh, I think the thing started at 9 a.m. and it was over by 4. And for four of those hours, I was speaking in a room. Not concurrently, although almost. And the first uh, hour was just sort of a um, thinking about your diabetes differently kind of talk. Where I sort of introduced people to the idea of the podcast. But then in the second hour, I talk about, you know, kind of the tools that we talk about here. And give people sort of like a one hour. If you can imagine like the whole idea of the podcast in one hour. It's me talking pretty quickly on stage. After that, I did a Q&A where we talked through people's like real life issues. But at the end of the day, I sat down with the teenagers who were, were at the event. And, you know, at first, um, they looked like teenagers coming into a room being told that, you know, this old man here is going to explain, you know, something to you about diabetes. And they sort of all came in like they, uh, I don't know, like somebody promised them something if they just came and sat still. Like maybe they had been uh, coerced, you know. But in a couple of minutes, I got them talking and I got them laughing and started talking to them about their health and how they could possibly feel. And, you know, 10 more minutes later, a couple of them were taking notes. 
and asking questions and then the quiet ones in the back got engaged. And um, I don't know, I was thinking about what I was thankful for today and, you know, the things in my life aside, my family and the people I love, you guys for listening. I just started thinking about those kids and I was really grateful that they listened. Anyway, I don't usually say what I'm grateful for at Thanksgiving, but um, I think I'm grateful for you guys sharing the podcast to the point where it got me invited to an event in Kansas City where I met a few kids whose lives might be different now because you told somebody else about the show. I'm going to put a picture of those kids up on my social media. So if you're listening to this, it's going to be right around Thanksgiving on my social media. You can find the date. Scroll back if you're listening to this later. Okay. This is me being all serious and quiet. Thanks so much for listening to the Juice Box Podcast. There'll be another episode on Tuesday and every Tuesday and Friday from now until at the very least the end of 2020 because all of the sponsors are back plus some new ones. So huge thanks to them. Huge thanks to you guys. Hope you have a great rest of your 2019. Keep listening to the show and sharing it and I'll keep making it. Hey, one last thing. I need some new equipment to record with. Um, so buy some t-shirts maybe or a sweatshirt or something maybe at juiceboxpodcast.com or you can make a donation to the podcast if you want. Just scroll down and you know, in every episode, there's a spot there to do that. Anyway, I'm not begging. Just need another microphone, a new preamp. Uh, my computer's starting to get to the end of its life. So there's going to be some expenses coming up in the next couple of months. And if you would like to help with them by, you know, picking up a sweatshirt or dropping five bucks on me or something like that, that'd be really cool. And if you can't, please don't think twice about it. Seriously, I don't want you to feel bad, not even for a second. Just keep enjoying the show, sharing the show, and I will uh, I will take care of the rest. But, but if you're just sitting there right now thinking, I got a couple dollars, I could handle that, uh, I'm not going to stop you, as they say, but I would be very appreciative.